Hello and welcome to another episode of Do Life. I am Pastor Delon Fletcher and I am so excited that you have joined us on this evening for another one of our Do Life episodes. When I tell you God's got something in store for you, you just need to stick around. And before we jump into things, I want to take a moment and opportunity just to thank all of our followers, all of our subscribers, our partners, our associates, our affiliates, everybody who has been connecting with us through the host of different virtual mediums that have been made available. Continue to connect, continue to engage, and let's grow together, let's learn together, and let's continue to love God even the more. Thank you so much for joining us on tonight. And for tonight, we want to kind of get things going off. And before I get started, I want to introduce our very special guest, the one and only Damaris Fletcher. Good evening. Good evening. It's always so good when we have an opportunity to get here together and because she like doesn't know what to really expect, but she does know because she kind of does it. So it's always fun when we have these moments. Um, I want to jump right into it, Damaris. Um, we've been working and we've been talking over the past few weeks uh, for the past one, two, three Do Life episodes. We've been talking about building this church. We've gone from so many different spaces. We've gone from the understanding the foundations of faith, you know, what Life International was, how it began, and the various experiences that so many people have had. And then we kind of springboarded into getting into diversity, equity, and inclusion, which was a really dope subject, just understanding all the diversity that has come through Life International, that is here in Life International, and how being diverse has really helped to shape the vision that Life International currently carries out and executes. And then we went to another episode where we kind of got to talking about the next generation and how that next generation has something to say, which was a super duper dynamic moment with um, James Coleman. And so as we've been building and showing the various facets of Life International, I think it's only fitting that as we work to bring this series to a close, that we really start to talk about embracing the journey. And so when I say embrace the journey, just at a static level, what does that mean to you when you first hear it? Well, I am constantly I've, I've the first thing that comes to mind is the seasons um mm. literal spiritual um i think that change is something that i've embraced mm -hmm. i've learned to embrace as i get older and so when i think of a journey i think of all of the seasons and the changes that happen the the shifts that happen on a journey and so i am in a place of um constant like discomfort <laughs> yeah, in a good way. Challenge. Challenge, right? <laughs> and um, but I've I what I've really learned in my life's journey is that I I'm almost looking forward to those challenges and look forward to journeys. And if I'm too complacent or too comfortable, I feel like a shift is either coming or a season is about to change. And mm. so I'm just like in this constant journey. As long as I'm alive, as long as we're alive, I think the first thing that comes to mind and sticks with me is that it's going to be change. That's yeah. always going to happen. So. Yeah. And I think you, you said so much, but what I really want to kind of zoom in if I can is the constant changing. And as I think of Life International, Life International has to, had to undergo constant changes, changes for relevance, changes for what we were dealing with from a societal perspective. There are so many different things that we have gone through as a body of believers. And one thing that I will say is change is constant. You know, I, I, I reflect one of the um, vignettes that our spiritual father, King Adamte, often shares is that when he first started, he was preaching in a room to, I believe it might have been Anna, Mommy, and her dolls. This might have been pre you. <laughs> and so to understand what that experience of change had to have been like from way back yonder 
till now, from the various facilities, the various locations, to the growth, and to now being where he wanted to be and the vision that he's always had for Life International, getting to that space. You can't get to certain spaces if you're not willing to endure change. And I think sometimes it's so easy to despise or not really like change because it is pushing us and it's challenging us. Mm -hmm. But if we don't accept facets of change, how can we realistically grow? Am I making sense? Oh, yes. Yes. And so I, I, I get it now because I resonate with so many of those same feelings where, oh my gosh, another change. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. But I always have the desire to grow. And so you can't desire growth and despise change in the very same breath. And so as we think about embracing the journey and all that God has brought through Life International and where God is taking Life International, one of the greatest changes that I think we've really had to adjust to was understanding how to be more versed and to navigate the digital spaces, what life was like, social media, do I dare say streaming, you know? As somebody who's been a key component of helping us elevate our service in those various um, territories, how did, you, how did you navigate those changes? Because I would imagine some of those changes might have been a little bit foreign to you. Mm -hmm. What was it like? Oh, stressful. I started in the media department when we were, sh when technology was <laughs> shifting as a whole. Like we went from analog to digital, streaming was introduced, social media was really introduced. There was a lot of new things that we just weren't doing or it wasn't a priority for our ministry just because word of mouth, which is still very valuable, was how we got the word out about our mm -hmm. services, about uh, outreach, about everything. So I had to learn things that I never even thought that I would be learning. I, I Streaming, for example, learning equipment and internet and all the things that happen with bandwidth and upload speed, <laughs> download speed, you know, like it was so many things that you don't factor into just running a service and getting your message out and going into this new space. Um, it was an adjustment for our internal team, but also for our, our audience online and in-house because now we're saying things like subscribe to our channel. Um, it was a good amount of stress, but it was also a huge learning curve for me. I have learned so much in my field. Um, I, I'm in media, I'm in branding and advertising. So being in the ministry and learning all of these things that I had no interest in or thought that I didn't have interest in before has blessed my business tremendously. Uh, I think everybody who's been involved, everybody behind the scenes, these people have been a part of our department for years now and are like, if you ask me, the best in the field. Yeah. So it's been an overall like very good experience. And I think, and you said a lot, and I think to chime in on it, it's all right, all right, but I think you're good. I think one of the amazing things, one, I'd like to say you've done a fantastic job and oh. you're doing a fantastic job. It took a lot of courage to step to the plate and you did it. You may have felt a little reluctant at times, but you did it. But what I really wanted to highlight in which you've just shared, change requires a degree of being vulnerable and having to reveal a little bit more just so that you can go a little bit further mm -hmm. and getting to those next steps. And so I appreciate you sharing what you've shared. And like you said, there are so many great things that happen and that come just based off of your service. Mm -hmm. And you were referencing how the work translates into the work that you actually do in the actual marketplace. Absolutely. And it also brings me back to thinking of another one of our members who started in media, and I believe he was doing some media at his college campus, and then um, Brother Bert, mm -hmm. and then from there gotten to here and doing a whole bunch of things for the church, and now 
the man's frequent flyer miles are through the roof, right? Yeah. He, he's, he's always on go mode. You know, I, I, I grimace and I smile when I'm watching TV sometimes at 11 o'clock and I see Burley with that camera because I know as, that he's, as he mounts that camera on that shoulder, that's an extension of what I've seen from him in Life International. And so I see the ministry on the floor at the Staples Center okay. or at all of these different places because, I don't know, I think when our gifts get honed and our gifts get sharpened in the house, it's just always another further beacon and a point of advertisement and visualization. And so I get really excited when I see Burley. And so I say all that to say, as your gift has evolved and as you've learned and as you've grown, let's take it in a step further. How do you see, for example, um, where technology and various digital communities are playing a role or are shaping how believers express their faith? I love to see it. I think digital, the digital space has brought the world closer than ever before. And so it's um, easier to get any message across, but I love, and I'm still, I am the generation that is like into social media, but like, and it might just be me, it might not be my whole generation, but like I'm not on all, <laughs> I'm not on the TikToks or like, I don't know all the things cause it's constantly changing. But one thing that I think is very cool is that this space is really allowing the Christians and believers and people who are just trying to share love and share positivity and inspiration with other people, you don't have to be necessarily attached to a ministry or a church body in order to connect, really connect with people. And I think that's one of the cool things that the digital space has mm -hmm. been able to do for the ministry and for the kingdom. Um, I think that it's cool to see uh, Christian creatives. Like yeah. It's, it's, I, I see all types of content all day, and it's really cool to see how um, creatives in the kingdom can really connect with people with their content in a way that's like, wow, I, like you're, you're planting a seed that, of inspiration without me like knowing it. And I love, I, I love how media has been able to do that, and social media has been able to do that. So I love that. That's a good thing, you know, and I think when we think about our title for tonight, Embracing the Journey, I don't know of many journeys that are brief. Mm -mm. Most journeys are actually quite long. They can be quite extensive. They could have a host of different things that you're going to experience or deal with. We could take a trip, and a trip is going to be brief or their trip might have an end date on it that's not too far out from the point of time in which you've started. But when we start to talk about embracing the journey, when you think of journeys, it's baggage. We got to make sure we're prepared. We got to make sure we got everything that we need to sustain us until we get to our point of arrival. And so as we're embracing this journey, I think there are so many houses of faith that, you know, embracing the journey, it's been a little bit challenging for some. Mm -hmm. It's been challenging because of shifts um, politically and in our social structures. Mm -hmm. I think it's been challenging because of what we're dealing with and we're still learning as it relates to the results of the pandemic mm -hmm. and how that's helped to shape how folks might feel emotionally and how they even feel about faith and how they feel about God. And so when we talk about embracing a journey, when you're embracing a journey, you have really got to be more than anything, you've got to be committed to trying to get to the end of where you're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's something that um, I've seen characterized so strongly here in this house between His Majesty's leadership, Lady Martha's leadership, there's there is a sense of, I've got to get right to that point. Mm -hmm. 
And so in working to get to that point, I'm not going to compromise and cause myself to miss everything that I've been working for because it's a journey. Mm -hmm. It's not a trip. And so I can't afford to let go of so many things that have sustained me through so many valleys, so many peaks, and this terrain on this walk of faith. Mm -hmm. We've got to hold true to those values and to those principles. And so it excites me because you highlighted the vision and how we've been able to bring the vision now to places where it may not have had the opportunity to be seen or to be witnessed before when we think of what it means to build a strong multicultural, multiracial body of believers where the nations gather. Now the nations are gathering through broadband, through T1 connections, through Google, through Zoom, and just about every other medium through YouTube, through Facebook, and through Instagram. But I would imagine to get to all that we have now, it's had to be a journey of trusting God mm -hmm. that everything that you're holding on to is going to lead you to that actual promise. And so I can't speak about that enough in this season because I really understand that value and that tenacity that you have to have when you are having to drive a vision that is bigger than you forward. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. And so as we embrace the journey, one scripture that just really always pops to mind, it comes through Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, and it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. And I'm going to pause right there because it's easy to lean to our expertise mm -hmm. rather than what it is that God might have said or what God might have spoken. Mm -hmm. And so for a generation that's emerging digitally in new facets and new ways, sometimes it seems that we're in a time and space where I can find every and anything, mm -hmm. even what I don't know. Mm -hmm. And so I think that one of the things that we as a body have to always keep ourselves mindful of and in the position of is ensuring that while we can have access to all the data and information in the world, that that doesn't cause us to abandon the principles that he has already spoken and left us in his word. Mm -hmm. Because lean not to your own understanding. When I think about that, I can also see, well, okay, I'm not going to lean to my understanding, but Google has a very comprehensive understanding. <laughs> you know what I mean? Somebody online is going to know something. <laughs> yeah. But I think when we think about what you're supposed to know, it's more so derived off of what you learned on that journey committing because it's through that commitment he speaks and that he gives us insight mm -hmm. and that he shares wisdom and so I don't know I, I get excited when it comes to embracing the journey and having these conversations because there is so much that God has doing but has done but I'm committed mm -hmm. to God mm -hmm. I don't know where I might be going but I'm committed yep. to following him yep. in that direction. Yep. And I think we have to be like that a little bit more frequently because it's too easy for folks not to be like that. Mm -hmm. And so, and I think that characterizes my next question, which is when we're in a society like today where things are changing, the perspective is changing, what is said, what can't be said, it is changing at an alarming rate. How do you find and maintain that sense of purpose and meaning through your faith? When there's the constant bombardment, there's the constant, the moment you pick up your phone, it's going to try to dictate to you mm -hmm. 
where you should go, how you should think. And if you said buffalo wings three times, there's going to get a buffalo wings ad instantly when you open up a social platform. Mm -hmm. And so when you think about that and all the changes, how do you maintain your sense of purpose through your faith? Ooh, doggy. That was a good conversation. I had a blast. We had so much that we kind of had to taper it just back in just a pinch. But don't you hesitate because we will be back with part two (laughs) on next Wednesday. Don't forget, join us at 7 p.m. Do life. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Hey, Life International family. Thanks for watching another Do Life session powered by King Adamte. We hope that you are blessed by today's discussion and have learned some key principles that you can apply to your everyday life. Join us next Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for our next Do Life session. You can join us by visiting our YouTube channel, where Life International RTP. And if you haven't done so, make sure you subscribe and turn on your post notifications so you don't miss a session. If you're in the Research Triangle Park or the surrounding area, we would love for you to join us on Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for our worship service. We're located at 5310 South Austin Avenue, Durham, North Carolina, 27713. If you're not able to join us in person, don't worry. You can join us via live stream by visiting lifeinternational.us slash TV. If you were blessed by today's message, we encourage you to give. Your giving is how we can continue to bring you messages like this on a weekly basis. You can give via text using your mobile device by texting your donation amount to 84321. You can also give online by visiting us at lifeinternational.us slash give. Or you can give by scanning the QR code with your mobile device's camera. Thank you for supporting our ministry through giving. We look forward to doing life with you. Have a blessed week. We'll see you next time. Bye.